All right, there we go, okay? So you can see once we start to mess around with this, that, that transposition, doing those half steps are actually really cool because this, it gives you like a way of playing in and out using one trichord that is not necessarily um, based on the 12 tone bow, but that's interesting. It, it does have a structural significance, which is very important that we're gonna talk about maybe in more detail in a little bit, but tell me what notes do those two trichords have in common? Do, or do they have any notes in common? Yes. E, e, right, yeah. So, so that, those two trichords, we would call that uh, a common tone under transposition. And that's another transformation that we use in 12 tone music, using common tones and then transposing. So it's no different than, let's say if I said, play a B flat major triad, and then play an E flat major triad, right? And they both have B flat in them, right? So it's the same idea, but we're using a different structure. We're using one plus two, and we're using E as the common tone, okay? Now, this is really significant because we can build entire solos just by using common tones and building structures that way using different trichord structures. And I'll demonstrate just by using that one tricord, okay? So I'm gonna use, start off by using the common tone E flat as, first I'll play through them so you can hear them, and then I'll improvise around it. But I'm gonna use common tone, the E flat as the common tone, then I'll use the E as the common tone, then I'll use the F sharp as the common tone. So here's we'll just with uh, the E flat. <laughs> So now what I'll do is I'll Im improvise, and I'll start with using the E flat as the common tone. I'll play a little bit on that, then I'll switch to the E, and then I'll switch to the F sharp, and you'll hear the tonality shift, right? So starting just with the first one. cyclical movements too. If I want to be really methodic about it, which I do when I practice, 
you know, you practice like. So the idea is that, so that you can hear the consonant dissonance play, because you know when we're doing this, um, a, a really important part of doing this is that we don't want to be thinking when we play. We want this to be an ear training thing, so we can actually learn to hear these as interval constructions. And then, you know, uh, when we hear a piece of music, I found when I first started working on this stuff, I would listen to the music, and then all of a sudden I would really recognize these sounds, you know, the way that we recognize major and minor triads and augmented triads, you start to hear these, these tonalities because each one has a very distinct sound. And it's very useful for ear training. It's really useful, you know. So um, when you're working on this stuff, I always encourage, you know, to really not only think of these in terms of, you know, a single note because as a saxophonist, that's all I got. But, but as, a, as a guitar player, you know, you guys have the possibility of using harmonic constructions, you know, so there's a lot there. So, um, so why don't we do this? Just I'm gonna. I'd like to hear all of you do, at least try a little bit of it. So I won't play the piano, but bad me that you didn't bring your bass, man. Where's <laughs> <laughs> me over bass? Yeah. <laughs> so I'll play a little bit. Why don't we do a little trade? So I'll try. I'll play you play. Where we just use the 
half step transposition just to acclimate yourself. You know, we can do this with any transposition. I mean, you know, do it in half steps, do it in whole steps, do it in my thirds, you know, and you'll find it gives you different sounds. So I'll demonstrate. So if I did a whole step, instead of going, <laughs> Instead of going minor third, what if I did the tritone? Because if I start on my C, I'm going C, E flat, F sharp, A. What if instead of going C, E flat, F sharp, A, what if I label these as A, B, C, D in terms of their position in the row? Okay. Now what if I go A, C, B, D? I'm changing the order. So what if I go, now it would sound like this. Okay, so now I did the one starts on C. Right, then I skipped the tritone away. Then I went back down. And so forth, right? So now I'm still playing the same chromatic. 
chromatic scale, but now I'm, sub, I'm, I'm playing subsets in different ways. I'm getting around the chromatic scale in an entirely different way because I'm breaking it down into these smaller components. Okay? So now what if I think in terms of shapes? Take that same chromatic scale. And I go up one. So I'm going up, down, up, down, right? The shape thing is super important. So, you know, we get into that vibe and start to develop different shapes, um, four notes and three notes. So I did the four note thing, where we talked about at the beginning of the thing, right? So there's lots of stuff, even just taking the chromatic scale, which you're familiar with, that if you start treating it in terms of the sets, the subsets, the trichord, you know, one plus one, all of a sudden you're gonna get into this other area. Also, uh, as you work on this, you'll find that, um, you know, you'll start playing the chromatic scale in, in because you're thinking in terms of a 12 tone row in different transpositions. So if I'm thinking, you know, it's, as opposed to just this long chromatic, chromatic thing, now I'm dealing with transposition. So if I have a 12 tone row starting on my C, I might play 12, uh, the chromatic scale, but thinking in terms of going up in whole tones, right? So if I go. <laughs> Side of the 12 tone row. Remember what I said about we can base things on, on um, different interval distances. Well, one of the things that you'll find if you dig into 12 tone music in sets with more than three pitches, four pitches, there are 29 sets that we have with four pitches. Okay, So it gets a little more complicated. That's why I deal with just trichords, because it's simpler. But if we get into four note sets, that's also the chromatic scale, but the chromatic scale in major thirds. One, two, three, four, right, starting, and then I start again. And then the next one, major third higher. Okay. So now I'm deal I can deal with the same chromatic scale, but in tetrachords or four note chords. So now I just played the, each tetrachord, but I played a different shape. Or I can play jumping around to them. So I'll start on the first one, go to the third tetrachord, and then back to the second. There's only three tetrachords here, you know, so. Okay, so all I did was take that same idea and I just played them as an arpeggio going. The root movement is that, right? You did? So there's a lot of extended things and, and the whole idea of using the ideas from set theory is that it gives us uh, as improvisers, different ways to build relationships between these sets. Okay? Now, the 12 tone rows are probably one of the most interesting because they use all 12 pitches and there's a, there's a reason why they work together. And there are ways that we can use them um, on chord changes, you know, different combinations. And they create different, each 12 tone row based on each trichord has a sonic palette that reflects a symmetric scale you are